What's up guys, how you doing? I hope you guys are well. Welcome to today's video. So it is Gear and Tips Tuesdays and I was thinking about what to do the video about today and I thought, you know what, what better than to give you guys the tips that you specifically would like. So we're doing a QA. and a I put out something onto my Twitter and onto my Instagram stories asking for questions uh, anyone who had a question they wanted to ask to ping it over loads of you guys did thank you so much i'm going to try to do all the questions um but we'll see how we go if the video runs on too long we might have to hold some of them but i can always try and include them into a future video if you didn't get the um the stuff on social media maybe you're not following me make sure you do go check it out you can follow me on twitter at rob samples photo you can follow me on Instagram in three different places. I'll put all three of them on the screen, but the main one is the top one is the at Rob Sample Sport because that's my main sports photography channel. And it's on the Instagram stories over there that I put the thing about the Q&A. Um, quite often, I will put stuff about my YouTube channel onto those social media channels. So do make sure you're following both of them because that's where you'll find like, you know, updates on when videos are coming things around Q&As, I'll be asking questions about future videos, stuff like that. So make sure you go check out both those channels if you aren't already. So like I said guys, today is about Q&A. I love these kind of videos when I watch them with like other photographers and generally people I follow on YouTube because I follow people on YouTube who've got nothing to do with photography as well. And the Q&A is always really interesting because often people ask the questions that you wanted to know the answers to as well. Before we get into some questions, please do hit that like button on the video. I've been talking about it a fair bit recently and I guess look just to give you the full picture of it right when when you're trying to grow a YouTube channel like like we are right now and when I say trying to grow I, I do this YouTube channel for fun right I, I I I mean although the channel is monetized now I don't make it like we're literally talking pennies guys right so I don't make any money I don't have any sponsors anything like that I'm not trying to make big money from YouTube I just do it because it's fun um, and it fits in cool with my photography and you guys certainly seem to enjoy it and that's why I've been doing it really it's literally like a hobby um, but at the same time, you know, I want to try and grow the channel because there's there's a lot of time goes into this. You guys probably don't realise, but even just to film a video like this, yeah, fine, it takes 10 minutes doing this piece. But then when you edit the video, you post it, you get it ready for YouTube, you upload it, you do your tags, all that kind of stuff. There's like a good few hours just goes into this one 10 minute video. So it is quite a lot of work. Um, and so, you know, I want that to be to be worthwhile and to make sure the channel grows because the more it grows and the bigger, um, you know, kind of the platform gets on YouTube, the more time and I can invest into it. And that's what I really want to do because I enjoy doing it and I think you guys quite enjoy it as well. Hitting the like button helps the video to be deemed as successful by YouTube. Um, the more successful it is, the more they share it around, the more people get to see the video. And that's the idea, right? That's why I always ask people to hit the thumbs up video. So if you do like the channel and you do want to support me, please make sure you hit that thumbs up button on each and every video. Please subscribe if you guys are new. We get loads of people who watch my videos who aren't subscribed. I don't know, maybe you guys are watching it and thinking, no, we don't want this guy, we're not gonna subscribe to him. Or maybe you just haven't got around to it yet. But probably about 30% of my total views come from people who aren't subscribed to the channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do think about doing it. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button whilst you're down there. And we can carry on making loads of cool videos, which I think you guys will enjoy. Anyway, enough chit chat about the channel. Let's answer some questions. <laughs> Cool, so in no particular format, we're chilling out right here in my conservatory, soon to be the office. We're in the process of converting it right now. You guys are currently set up on the uh, the new table which I've made. I'm gonna do a video talking all about how we're converting this office real soon. But in the meantime, I've got loads of the questions from Twitter and Instagram right here. Let's get into it and we will go through them. So the first question came from Twitter, um, from JB Photography. Um, actually asked me a couple of questions, which is cool. Um, I will um, I, I will link the people who've asked the questions on screen, guys. So I'll put JB Photography's Twitter on the screen right now. And the first question he asked was, do you ever think you'll have enough photography work to go full time, i.e. not have a second job? Um, so, well, a bit of a funny question, I guess. So I guess... Well, look, the honest answer is, right, I if, if I was to pursue more photography work, I probably would have enough to go full time right now just doing the photography. That wouldn't just be sports photography. That would be lots of other bits as well. 
but I'm not looking to do that right now, right? I, I spend a fair bit of time and a lot of my work is my photography, but I do something else as well, also because I enjoy the other thing that I do and it gives me a stable income. And look, it's not just me, right? I've got Mrs. Sambles, I've got Connor, I've got little Sambles on the way. Um, so I've got to make sure that I provide, um, you know, decent income for my family. Um, and so whilst I reckon I could probably get enough work right now, the risk associated with it isn't a risk I would want to take right now. So, so yeah, I, I could, um, and I'm sure I may be in the future, but right now that's not what I'm trying to do. Um, I really enjoy my other job and, and I'm committed to, to that and I've got no intention of changing it. This is very much you know, a hobby doing all the YouTube stuff. My sports photography is work. That's not necessarily a hobby. Um, although it is, it's kind of where I've turned a hobby into a job, right? Which is which is the dream, I guess. Um, but right now, I'm not trying to do that. So I hope that answers the question. Um, there was also a second bit of question you asked about, is there a standard you have to adhere to when adding metadata? Um, yes, there will be. It depends on who you're working for. It depends on the agency. They will normally give you the detail of the metadata you've got to include into each photo. And then they will have certain standards of what they want you know whether they want players names and so on and so on and so on so yeah there's normally a standard but it might vary depending on the job that you are doing right great question what's next so the next question comes from simon bissett photography on instagram i'll put it on the screen right here um, it said taking into account cost of gear travel etc how long did it take you to make a profit um, good question, God. Um, so how long did it take me to make a profit? Um, a long, long time. And in fact, I'm probably barely even making a profit now if you were just to break down my sports photography. But like I said, I do other bits of photography as well, right? So the, the reason I say a long, long time is because to start with, I quite deliberately didn't make any profit. Um, photography is a very expensive hobby and particularly sports photography can be quite expensive. So when I set out into it and I bought my first couple of cameras, I very much set myself a goal of only spending money on photography that I made from photography. And so everything I made for at least my first probably five years doing photography alongside my other full time job, I, I reinvested everything into gear. So I gradually upgraded my gear as I went. So, you know, people say, hey, how do you afford all this expensive gear? Well, I did it really gradually. And you guys have been watching my videos for a while. You'll know that I've gradually changed the gear as we've gone along. Um, so, you know, with selling an old piece of gear and reinvesting a little bit of money, there wasn't that much of a big financial step each time. If you were to go straight from nothing to the gear I've got now, yeah, that would be a massive outlay in cash. Um, which I which I didn't have to do. So now look, I um, you know, obviously I do make money now. Um, but I didn't try to make a profit for a long time. So I guess it really depends on how urgent it is for you to make a profit um, because that will then probably steer, you know, how much money you reinvest and therefore how quickly you make that profit. I hope that makes sense. Good question. Next question comes from Alex Photo. I'll put it on the screen also from Instagram. And this question was the favourite football game you ever photographed. Um... So, no, I, do, I was going to say I don't know. I do know. Um, you know, I've, I've been lucky enough to photograph lots of big football events, right? I, I loved my first time photographing England, my first FA Cup final, my first Premier League game, first Champions League game. All of those were, were awesome. I really enjoyed them. But you know what? My favourite ever game, it was in the Championship the season before last. Um, and it was a Fulham game. Um, you guys know I'm a Fulham fan as well as a lot of my work is photographed in Fulham. And um, Mitrovic scored a winning goal. I can't remember who it was against. It might have been against... No, I can't remember who it was against. But he scored the winning goal. Um, and it was a tight game. It was a game that meant quite a lot. Um, and not only did he score the winning goal, he also ran straight at me. And I was the only person sat in the corner I was in. So Fulham got the win. It was a great goal. It was right in front of me. I was pitch side. And the celebration ran straight towards me. And I got some wicked shots. I will put the, um, the a couple of the photos from that into the video right here so you can see what I mean. So that's probably my favourite ever game. I, I remember I came back home from that game buzzing told Mr. Sambles oh, I was awesome, great, got the celebration shots and, and it was really good. So that's probably my favourite game. I couldn't even tell you who they were playing, but that was my favourite game. I'll whack those photos in. I tell you what, I'll whack those photos in right now. Transition for the photos.
there you go. I hope you guys enjoyed those too. So, what was the next question? Uh, oh, it's another one from Simon Bissett Photography. Um, he said, if you could only use one lens for the rest of the year, um, which one would you choose? Easy question, um, easy answer rather. That would be my Canon 70 to 200 um, IS uh, lens, great lens, and it gives you the most versatility for sports. I've done a couple of other videos about why I think that lens is great, so go back and, um, and check that one out and you'll see why I think it's great. But 100%, my Canon 70 to 200mm f2.8 would be the lens if I could only use one. Let's forget, next question is Doug Cooper on Instagram. Doug's actually a friend of mine. Um, and thank you for the question. Um, I'll stick his Instagram here as well. What's the hardest sport to photograph that you've had a go at and why? That's a real good question. Now, um, I'll answer it in terms of which was the hardest one for me because actually I think one of the hardest sports to photograph that I've done is actually basketball but right now I probably don't really find that that difficult because I've done it so much and the reason it's hard is because it's really fast moving and the action changes the place of where it's happening all the time. But now I've got used to that, and the reason I, I'm quite good at doing it now is because I can anticipate where the ball's going to go. One of the hardest sports I've done, very, very similar, was netball. And the concept of it you'd think would be the same, but it moves in a really different way to basketball. And uh, players defend very differently in netball as well, because they don't tend to play man-to-man, -man, they defend like areas. So I, I, I wasn't as good at anticipating the movement of where players were going to go. And I would be following the action, and then it would go somewhere where I wasn't expecting it to go. Or I would think, yeah, nice, I've got a moment, and a defender would cross over in front of me and block my shot. And the combination of being fast moving and me not knowing it as well were the two factors that really made it difficult. Um, Doug's a big rugby fan. First time I photographed rugby, I found that a challenge too because I wasn't so used to anticipate where the action was going to go. I'm a lot better at anticipating it now um, and I've watched a bit of rugby on TV deliberately for that reason. So now I'm a lot better at doing it and, and working out where the action's going to go. Good question, man. Thank you. What was next? Um, Max Tom 4 also from Instagram, I'll put it on the screen right here. Have you ever tried a mirrorless camera for sports photography? Man, great timing with this question. The answer is no, but I really want to. Um, I was actually sat next to somebody who was shooting sports at the Fulham game last night with a Sony mirrorless camera, and I was chatting to her a bit about it. Um, I would love to try mirrorless camera. In fact, what I would love to do, I want to do a video um, on how the Canon EOS R um, works for sports photography and whether or not it will work at all. Um, so if anyone watching this has got a Canon EOS our camera that they would like to lend me you can come and feature in the video as well please let me know because we could make that video happen but no I haven't tried one um, but I really want to so I'm gonna try and make that happen soon because I've got no doubt that's the future of photography it's only a matter of time before we'll all be using mirrorless cameras pitch side um, let's let's see how they work right now good question man thank you right let me see what else we had Next question, back to Twitter and back to JB Photography. Said, how did you progress through the leagues with your football photography? Um, good question. And perhaps, oh God, the answer's maybe going to make a few people feel a little bit mad because to be honest with you, I didn't really progress through the leagues. I kind of started fairly high up. And the reason for that is because I didn't photograph football to start with. My sports work started mainly with basketball. I was doing loads of basketball photography and I got fairly good at doing that and then I randomly one of those situations where I knew a guy who knew a guy and they needed somebody to go and photograph a Fulham Academy game which isn't too far away from me um, I went to do that that was pretty much like my second ever time photographing football um, that worked fairly well and I, and I did a half decent job of that um, and they invited me back and as you guys now know I photographed the Fulham Academy like all over it's one of the main things I do from that, I built a fairly good football portfolio, um, and then I, I started working for agencies covering Championship and Premier League and Champions League and everything pre pretty quick, to be honest with you. So I didn't really work my way up through the leagues, but how I got into shooting football was developing a, a decent sports portfolio. Mine was mainly basketball, and then as soon as I started covering football, which was the academy games... 
I got as strong a portfolio as I could from that. And then I put that out there a couple of places, started working with a couple of agencies. Um, and then I moved to, to working for Frozen in Motion Agency, um, mostly, which is who I work for now. So how did I do it? I did practice, 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 um, tried to build the strongest portfolio I could. And then I put that portfolio out there in front of people. Um, only when I knew it was strong enough, right? Putting a weak portfolio in front of people could be a bit risky. Um, so make sure you get those best possible images, those like six, eight, 10 of the best possible images you've got. That should be your portfolio. You don't want like average images going in a portfolio because you wouldn't want an agency looking at it thinking, ah, oh, it's not really good enough. And then your name's kind of off the list. And whereas maybe if you'd waited a year, got a real strong portfolio, it could have worked out well. I hope that answers the question. Good question though, man, thank you. Uh, what was next? Uh, Stuart Kirby on Instagram, I'll put his handle on the screen right here. What other fields of photography have you worked in bar sports? Good question. Um, quite a few and quite a few. I've done lots of like loads of random bits, right? I've done lots of like portrait stuff, headshots, um, like more traditional white screen background portrait stuff. I've done lots of events like school, college, university events, um, varying from like evening parties, um, conferences. I've photographed music events. Um, I photographed an art exhibition. So loads of different event stuff, I guess, um, you know, and I got a lot of those relationships through sports. Like I started working with a couple of universities through doing sports stuff and then they got me back and I do all, all different events. Um, I've helped out with a couple of weddings, not like not like photographing weddings, doing like assisting stuff. Um, that's something I'd like to do in the future maybe because it's such a creative part of photography versus um, sports, which I love, but I would say it's a bit less creative. Um, but quite quite a lot of different things, I guess. Um, I do loads of I've done lots of wildlife and landscape, but never for like paid paid work. Um, I hope that answers the question. Good question. What's next? Sportfolio Ollie from Instagram. I'll put it on the screen right here. When photographing a game of football, do you send the images straight off? Yes, man, the answer is yes, I do. That is one of the biggest challenges of sports photography is you have got to send them quick, quick, quick. Um, in a typical football game, let's say, or basketball, whatever, but you asked about football, so let's say football. In a typical game, I'll try and send a couple of images or a few images every, like, 10 or 20 minutes if nothing happens. As soon as there's an event, like a goal, maybe a player gets sent off or something like that, and I've got some photos of that moment, I will try to send those straight away. Um, the top, top agencies will literally have them going straight. They will have a wire into their camera that where as they take that photo, it goes off to an editor and it's getting sent straight away. The quickest guys who are working entirely on their own, like I do pitch side with my laptop and everything, the quickest guys will have a photo, probably get sent within two minutes of a goal going in. I sometimes achieve that two minutes, sometimes I'm a little bit longer, maybe three, four minutes, but um, I'm trying to work that workflow to be quicker all the time. But yeah, you literally are sending them straight away, all the way through the game. I've done a few videos about this, so go check out my videos. I'm actually intending on doing a new video soon. I'm really talking all about my pitch side workflow a little bit more because I think I could um, cover that topic in a bit more detail and I think that would make for quite a cool video. Good question man, I hope that answers it for you. What else did we have? In fact, how long has this gone on for? Uh, it's gone on for quite a while, I think there's probably enough questions for now. I hope you guys found that interesting. Um, you know, if you did ask me a question that I haven't answered, um, I literally just went through them kind of randomly, but I will mark the ones I didn't answer and we will include those in a new video real soon. I'm gonna try to maybe um, do a new video soon where I might uh, do like another live Q&A. Last time we tried to do it, YouTube crashed and we ended up doing it on Instagram and that worked quite well. So we might do the next one on Instagram. So if you're not already, make sure you are following my Rob Sample Sport because that's probably where I would do it. I would do it in Instagram live over there. I hope you guys enjoyed this one though. If you did, like I said earlier, I'm not gonna harp on it again. I'm just gonna say, please do hit that thumbs up, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, or please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. I hope you guys enjoyed this Gear and Tips Tuesday episode, and I will see you guys in a few days in the next video. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you guys soon.